Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So for the third video that I am bringing you in my end of the year videos, we have my worst books that I read in 2020. Please do go and check out the last video I put up which was with my husband talking about his favourite books of the year. That was a lot of fun to film and more uplifting than this video is going to be for sure. So I have to say I didn't read any books this year that I really hated. I didn't read anything that massively offended me or that made me really angry. If you're wanting some of that I would highly recommend checking out my worst books of the year video that I filmed last year. Things got salty. That being said I did read a few books this year that I really didn't like and honestly I just thought were a bit shit. Now is the wonderful time of year in which we get to talk about them. I have five books I'm going to be talking to you about in this video. They were the five worst lowest rated books I read this year for various reasons. We have some literary fiction, we have some historical fiction, we have some fantasy, we have some YA. I've put them in a vague order working up to the very worst one that I read this year. Yeah, but really they're just all kind of meh. I hope you all enjoy this video, I hope you find it entertaining, I hope you find it useful in some way. Let's get into it. So the first worst book I read this year was As You Were by Elena Feeney. This is a literary fiction novel that I've heard described as tragicomic, which isn't something I'd ever heard of before. It is set in modern day Ireland, it follows a story of a tough driven 30 something year old woman named Sinead. Sinead spends the majority of the book in a failing hospital getting treatment for her terminal cancer, although she keeps this terrifying truth from her family. So this is the least bad novel on this list and to be honest a large part of why this one is on here is surely due to me not gelling with the book more so than it being terrible. Really, I should have liked this book. I was intrigued by the plot and the themes of mortality and family. It's very character focused, it's written quite unconventionally, very stream of consciousnessy, which I'm always up for. But honestly, this book just did nothing for me. I couldn't connect to Sinead at all. I didn't feel as though I got to know her. I couldn't couldn't build up a picture of her in my head. I didn't care one bit. The writing also didn't work for me. It was so disjointed and odd that honestly I just found it confusing and distracting. This novel's thing is that it is supposed to be sharp and darkly comic and I did kind of get those vibes, I could see the intention, but it just didn't come together at all for me. I didn't get this book. Next up is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Now this is a little bit of a controversial one. I know that a lot of people have really liked this novel this year and so many people love this author not for me. <laughs> so this is a standalone fantasy novel set in Mexico during the Jazz Age, in which the Mayan god of death sends a young woman off on a life-altering journey away from the small town in which she was brought up. So there were good things about this book. It has a rich and vibrant setting, it has a fresh feeling storyline, but while there were good foundational aspects to this book, Sylvia Moreno-Garcia still managed to make me feel so detached and indifferent to this story. It's actually kind of impressive. This book was too short, firstly. For the Weldon story in here, 
everything felt far too rushed. The author could have made so much more of things. Similarly, the characters felt so surface level to me. They had no depth. They weren't interesting to me at all. I do think that the traditional verbal story-like feel to the text was an intentional choice on the part of the author and perhaps some people really liked that. But for me, it just added to this overall feeling of witnessing the text from really far away and not being in it. I didn't enjoy this one, it didn't convince me, I couldn't make myself care no matter how hard I tried. Next up is Sin Eater by Megan Campisi. This is a historical novel that I read pretty recently and just firmly swooped into my worst reads of the year. This book again has a very cool premise, one that I was really excited about in fact. Set in 16th century England, this novel follows the story of a young orphan girl who becomes a sin eater, somebody who eats the sins of the dead and takes them on themselves, allowing the person to pass on to heaven. Towards the beginning of the novel, our protagonist here is the sins of some people from the royal court and ends up getting swept into this world of betrayal and treachery and murder. I really wanted to like this novel. I love me a dark, gritty English historical novel and this one is centred around such a fascinating thing from history. But honestly, <laughs> I just wish someone else had written this book. Someone else probably should still write this book. I wanted this to be plot driven and intriguing and visceral and delicious. Instead what I got was something not very well thought through, poorly paced and incredibly averagely written. We have a good basic idea here but literally nothing else. And that just meant that this was never going to be a well-rounded, entertaining and effective novel. Such a shame. The penultimate book on this list, the second to worst book I read in 2020 was Fleischman is in Trouble by Taffy Brodessa Aikner. This is another pretty controversial one, this one being because it made the long list of this year's Women's Prize for Fiction. So as far as I remember, and <laughs> it didn't make much of an impression, this novel just follows a newly single middle-aged man when his ex-wife drops off the radar. <sighs> this book. Why would Taffy Brodessa Aikner do this? Here we have an obviously terrible, miserable, self-pitying man who is having a hard time and then we get to the inevitable point of the book where it goes, shock, it's actually worse for women. While this is a point, this book was not interesting, it was not innovative, it was not insightful, it gave me nothing. And on top of that, this book is just so annoying. There is so much angst and self-pity in here. The protagonist thinks about sex all the time. The opening is just this man thinking about sex and women's bodies and sex and women. But like not in an interesting way, just in a gross and boring way. I will say that Taffy Brodessa Aikner is not a bad writer, there were some fine moments in here, but there was nothing special and nothing that even came close to making up for how fucking annoying this character and book was. This book actually kind of pisses me off, it pretty hilarious. And the final book I'm going to be talking about today, the worst book that I read in 2020, maybe, arguably, is We Used To Be Friends by Amy Spaulding. This is a YA contemporary novel 
and honestly it was so terrible. Everything about this book was either just passable or actually bad. It was really sad. The book follows two teenage girls who have been best friends forever until their final year of high school. The storyline switches between the two girls' perspectives, one of the storylines moving forward in time and the other storyline moving back in time. I'm always up for a YA contemporary novel every now and again. There are some that I've absolutely loved. Alice Oseman is the best that I have read to date. I enjoy coming of age storylines and examinations of friendships in novels and this book's unique narrative structure playing around with timelines and perspectives really grabbed my attention. I thought it was going to be really cool. It was not cool. This was not the raw, tender, insightful examination of the breakdown of a childhood friendship that I was wanting. I didn't like either of the central characters, they were not well developed at all, and they were both actually just kind of mean, which infuriated me. Friendships between teenage girls do not necessarily break down because the girls become bitches to one another. Let's not perpetuate that. Furthermore, their relationship was full of needless miscommunication, and not in an interesting or realistic way, just in a why are you not communicating like normal people way. And the unique structuring just didn't work in here either, unfortunately. I thought the oppositely running timelines would help interestingly piece together what had occurred in this friendship, but it didn't. The way the timelines were slotted together did not offer any new insight, it didn't create any kind of suspense. If anything, the only purpose it served was to make me confused as fuck about what the hell was going on in this book. If I can't follow what is going on in this storyline, we have an issue. I'm going to stop now, I think that is quite enough. This book was just filled with missed opportunities and all of the elements were just pitched wrong for me. It wasn't well thought through, it wasn't well written, it wasn't well edited. What can I say? I <laughs> wasn't impressed. So there we go, those were the worst books I read in 2020, or the books I liked the least, however you want to put it. I really hope you enjoyed hearing me rant about them. Sometimes it's good for you, I feel, to just get out what you don't like about books. Please let me know if you've read any of these. Do you agree? Do you disagree? And also definitely let me know down below what your worst read of the year was. I can't wait to hear. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate it so, so much much. An extra special thank you to everyone who comments as well. Reading your comments and replying is like <laughs> such a highlight for me. Hopefully I will see you all soon with the video we're all waiting for, my best reads of the year. I can't wait to film it, I can't wait to get it up for you guys. Until then, I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all having really nice weeks, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.